Join us at the free Ag PhD July 23rd Field Day in the Hefty Farm near Baltic, South Dakota. You'll see a live tiling demonstration along with field plots in corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. There will be entertainment, food, and off-site optional tours as well. For complete details, go to agphd.com. In our farm basics today, we wanted to discuss silks in corn. Are you finding a lot of silks out in this corn, Darren? <laughs> Not in this particular <laughs> field, uh, but when you think about reproductive stages in corn, how does a corn plant get there? Well, it has to get there by heat unit accumulation. So when you plant your corn early, then that corn is gonna take advantage of more heat throughout the season. When you plant it late, well, it's got a little catching up to do. But once that corn plant tassels, the next thing that you'll see from where the ears are going to form is you'll see some silks coming out the ends of the ears. Yep, and what those silks are there for is to transport pollen. In other words, when pollen comes off the tassel, it lands on the silk, and then it's going to actually fertilize that ear of corn. So each one of those silks is directly connected down to where a kernel of corn will form in the plant. And that silk remains attached to where that kernel of corn should be until it gets fertilized. After it gets fertilized, the silk releases itself from that ear and then eventually you end up with the brown silk stage. You might say, well, why do the silks turn brown? Well, it's because they're no longer connected to the plant, they're dead. Well, it gets a good visual of that. If you've ever had sweet corn that you've had to husk the, the, the shucks off the outside of that ear, and you've got the silks there as well. well when you start peeling back the, the husks from the outside of the ear, you'll notice that some silks just fall right off. Those are the ones that actually fertilized a kernel, and then you'll notice that some are still stuck to that cob, and you've got to just pull them out. I mean, there'll be just a few usually on a good ear of sweet corn, but sometimes if you've got a lot of kernels that are missing, you'll have a lot of these silks that are really held on there pretty firm. They're still hoping that they're going to get fertilized someday, even though we know it's not going to happen. So it is one of the interesting things, I think, because I never really realized this growing up. I just thought the silks were there to get the ear fertilized, and I didn't give it any thought beyond that, but how you know that the plant or that each specific kernel got fertilized is the silk will detach itself and then you know you should have a good kernel later on. All right, now there's a few different things here with silks as well. Sometimes those silks can't get out the end of the ear. That's known as silk balling, where they just ball up underneath the husks and then it's nearly impossible for them to get fertilized ever. The other thing is sometimes the insects like to feed on those silks and clip them off on the end. What happens in that case? <laughs> well, then again, that ear can't get properly fertilized and those insects that usually will feed on the silks are adult corn rootworm beetles. They're easy to control, but you got to get them under control if you have lots per ear and enough that it does shave those right down to the husk. So the silks are a very important part of your corn ears development. They have to each individually get fertilized in order for every kernel on that ear to develop. Well, another thing that's important out in cornfields is weed control, especially if you've got our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it later in the show.